MCC Season 4 kickoff is right around the corner with the roster of games for this event being just announced a few days ago. And so with the games being revealed, me and the rest of the crew decided this would be the perfect time to give you guys our final MCC Season 4 kickoff team predictions. So make sure to let us know if you agree with our predictions by commenting your own down below. Anyways, without further ado, let's just get right into it. At number 10, we have the Pink Parrots. And for this team, I think the best game will probably be Sense of Time. And maybe possibly bingo but fast as well with their Minecraft skins and such. But team based games will be their forte here. However, if you consider skill based games like Rocket Speed Rush or like Sky Battle, they might struggle a little bit on that department. So 10th place it is for Pink Paris, unfortunately. In ninth place, we have the Orange Ocelots. Well, this team definitely has the potential to place higher. Uh, notably, this team honestly scares me quite a bit in Meltdown. I'm not sure that they'll get the game order they like, as well as I feel like they're getting out-competed in a lot of the games. While this team might have a lot of potential, I feel like this team is getting out-competed in a lot of games and it was more of a generalist team than anything. But if I had to pick a single game they struggle in the most, it'd probably be to get to their side, which is why we only have them at number nine, but they definitely have the ability to approve this wrong. At number eight, we have the Purple Pandas, with their best game most likely being Santa Time, but assuming the new game that MCC is going to add in this event is a team game, I could see them doing well at that game as well. For the most part, Purple is actually a really good team, it's just that I don't know if they're going to be able to compete against these other teams, considering these other teams are actually pretty good. At the end of the day, Purple isn't the strongest in a lot of other games in this event, but I could see them maybe doing good in like an RSR or maybe even a Sky Battle depending on how well JoJo performs. But for the most part, they are just a well-rounded team that isn't or just overall the strongest team in the event. But nonetheless, I still think they're going to have a fun time and it's going to be a great team to watch nonetheless. At number 7, we have the Red Rabbits. And for this team, I think their best game will probably be, well, Sky Battle. And maybe potentially in Bingo But Fast. Now... The reason why is it Sky Battle, you ask? Well, Feinberg himself. Feinberg's very good in many, many games and many, many events. And that he can dominate in the sorts of games where you have potential to pop off, like in Sky Battle and more. And the rest will probably be depending on the teammates. Whether it is to get to their side, Battle Box, and all the other games, we will have to see, especially in those games being skill based games. And we have a newcomer of Shield Chaos who Larry touches Minecraft, so that could be detriment when it comes to the team's performance, to say the least. In 6th place, we have the Blue Bats. Now this team is really hard to place because of a few reasons. Number one, this team just feels like a ridiculously strong meltdown team. And if this team gets a Meltdown Finale, this team easily could be in the top two. With that being said, we don't think a Meltdown Finale is the most likely with 10 Hermits on the roster. And on top of this team is likely to struggle in a game like Bingo, for example, where not all of them are the strongest at it. If this team does not get the uh, PvP games this team really wants in the latter half of the event, this team may find itself not in the best position. But hey, they definitely could prove us wrong. At number 5, we have the Aqua Axolotls, with their best game most likely being Hole in the Wall. Now, to be honest, in my personal predictions, I actually predicted this team first, so... But sadly, we had to come to an agreement that Aqua is going to place lower than I think they are because, you know, of other teams that might do better than them at the end of the day, sort of like Green, which we'll get to later in the predictions, but... Anyways, I'm still fine with them being in 5th. I mean, I mean, it's, it's smack dab in the middle, so they could either do really good or really bad from, you know, putting them in 5th, so at least we're not going to get totally roasted roasted if you know aqua does really good or really bad but nonetheless like you know aqua is a good team at the end of the day pete and sparkles is a really good duo and we think flip should do actually pretty decent in his first event back in a little bit so yeah i mean all around they're actually a really good team and uh i can't wait to see how they do on event day but yeah for right now i think fifth is a solid placement for them at number four we have the cyan coyotes and for this team i think their best game may probably be on the wall. Now, this is based on the latest performances from, well, Anthros and Anthenum themselves, as they dominate in some of the games that they play. But on the other hand, Anthros helps the team a lot and helps carry the team when it comes to skills as well as communication. And Anthenum also has the potential, with his last event being a high placement one, as well as saving the team in sense of time. However, though, some team games may be a struggle as well. So who knows what's gonna happen. And with Small Man coming in, hey, it is gonna be fun at the very least to see if this team could dominate or not. Coming in third place, just missing out on the final two, 
and the finale, unfortunately, is the Yellow Yaks. Now, this team is a very interesting team. We have Fruitberries, well known for dominating events recently, and Zeus, who didn't have the best season three, but was ridiculously dominant in season two. Gumi, who's been popping off in recent events and running out this team, is false who's done pretty well recently and has her fair share of wins. This team overall is a really insane team with a lot of potential and whether or not they live up to the potential is a big question this event. So if this team lives up to the potential, this team could dominate the event, especially in PvP games like Sky Battle and honestly, move all the movement games, or maybe in RSR, but this team may struggle a little more in the comms games like Sans. But even still, this team has a lot of potential to adapt and make its way to the top but just because this team has a, is a lot of it is potential we don't feel comfortable putting them quite in the top two at number two we have the green geckos with their strongest game most likely being battle box now this is a very interesting team because in my predictions again i have this team pretty lowly ranked but we ended up deciding to actually put them very high up and putting them in second freaking place so it's gonna be interesting to see uh, if we are right or if we are super wrong, you know, I mean at the end of the day the Shane and Fire Breath Man duo is arguably the strongest duo in the entire event You could argue that so you never know. I mean it, it could happen, but yeah I feel like Battle Box is just a perfect game for this team I mean Exuma and Scar actually should do pretty good considering Scar is you know the one and only Hawkeye and Joel actually is pretty good at Battle Box considering like he's not a PvP main or anything like that and fire breath man actually is like probably the second best battle box player i think behind either sap nap or kratzy depending on you know who who's better on the day i feel like and yeah one of their weaker games would probably be rocket sweep rush just because shane as the leader of this team isn't the best at it and neither is joel particularly but i mean maybe they could do good in one or two rounds of rocket sleep rush but just as a team as a whole i feel like they aren't going to do that well in rsr so yeah i'd say that's probably their weakest game but they definitely have a lot of stronger games as well including sky battle to get to the other side and even meltdown probably and yeah this team probably has a lot more stronger games than they do have weaker games so that's why we're going to put them in second and yeah we just can't wait to see if uh, we're right or not because this team is definitely uh an interesting one at number one we have the Lime Llamas. So, why do we have the Lime Llamas at number one? Uh, let's talk about their strengths. Uh, first of all, CPK and H-Bomb is quite a strong duo uh, between their, their PvP movement and team game ability. It's really not a, a big weak spot for this team between that duo. And supporting cast-wise, we have the Return of Iskow, who came 15th in his only event, granted it was MCC5, and Cup fan, definitely one of the stronger hermits. This team doesn't really have a weak player, assuming all of the players play up to their potential, which I have no reason to doubt because H Bomb is an insane leader and CPK is an absolute sweat in the nicest way possible. <laughs> but at the end of the day, even the strongest team in the events does have their weaknesses. And particularly for this team, their weakness is most likely going to be PvP, specifically Sky PvP, <clears throat> Sky Battle. So yeah, they probably are going to struggle at sky battle and just that game overall i mean maybe they'll struggle at the new game which is probably going to be a team game maybe it could be a pvp game there's a very small likelihood that it is a pvp game so maybe it's like a miscellaneous game i don't know to be honest but most likely it is going to be a team game i feel like just kind of to quote unquote replace build mart for now or whatever whatever nox crew's looking to do but so as long as they like do good in that game they should be able to do good but like what I said, like the new game is the new game, so they could struggle at it. So that probably is one of their weaknesses. But their biggest weakness right now is probably going to be Sky Battle. So maybe they should practice on MCCI and get some training in, because they might struggle a little bit in that game. And for the strongest game, in my opinion, for this team, would possibly be Battle Box. Well, because of their practices, their practice streams and all that kinds of stuff, they have good communication and they have very much a potential in the game, to say the least. Now, in my opinion, this team's strongest game is probably going to be Bingo But Fast. I think their game knowledge is just kind of superior to every other team's. I mean, the, the only teams that I could really see competing with them are like Pink, Green, and maybe Purple. All the other teams, I feel like, are definitely going to fall behind against Yolime. But, of course, a team this strong doesn't just have one strong game. And if I had to pick a pick, I'm going to take the, the easy pick here and picking Sands of Time. H-Bomb is the sense is the sense of time the goat and tpk iskel a, a bolt hunters player 
and then Cub Fan has all been a part, and Cub Fan's been a part of many good Sans teams. I think this team should have a really good shot at getting first in Sans of Time. Anyways, guys, there is MCC Central's MCC Season 4 kickoff team predictions. Hope you guys did enjoy. If you did, make sure to leave a like and subscribe down below. And if you haven't already, make sure to follow us on our Twitter and make sure to join our Discord. Both links in the description down below. So you can get involved with our MCC community over here because it's pretty hype, not gonna lie. And if our predictions are totally wrong and we look like idiots, then yeah, you guys can come back and definitely make fun of us for it because, I mean, we deserve it. We literally took an hour to make these predictions, so if we are totally wrong, then it is our fault. The likelihood of that is very much little to none, but hey, I guess anything can happen. Anyways, thank you everyone so much for watching, and we will see you guys in the next video. Bye, peace, peace out. Bye, boy, bye, boy.